Hello everyone and welcome back to my hard time series in Kerbal Space Program 0.25. In the previous episode we landed this lander on Val and gained some much valuable science from that. But uh, somebody reminded me that actually I had forgotten at least one thing, probably more than one thing. Uh, but we can do a temperature scan uh, flying above Val if we could just hover a little bit. So I'm going to do that right now. Log temperature, transmit. Okay, so that's done. So I forget who mentioned that, but thank you for that. We should uh, get that. It's uh, no telling when the next time I actually send something to Val might be. Okay, so back down again. Anyway, uh, okay, I could have brought it back to orbit, I guess. I didn't have to bring it back down. But hey, uh, let's just get on with things. In this episode, I want to get to uh, getting our Tylo lander all situated. Uh, situated being at least into orbit around Tylo. And at best, uh, I, I, I don't think we got to be able to land it, honestly. Uh, it's all a matter of delta V at this point. So it's a question of can we get enough delta V to land it. And I don't know. The, the science... These science uh, landers were uh, built in my previous series, 0.24, and, and uh, yeah, I didn't specially build it to land on Tylo or anything like that. Uh, though, I mean, uh, I mean, I would have to calculate how much delta V it actually takes to land on Tylo, and I haven't done that yet. But on the bright side, we do have two separate contracts here. We've got transmitter to recover scientific data from space around Tylo in this contract, and also we've got the Explore Tylo contract here. So uh, we're going to get some good contract fulfillment out of this if we at least get into orbit and do science there. So that is what I intend to do first. After that we want to look into building our space station. The reason I'm getting this science is because I want to unlock large docking ports in order to build a proper space station. Uh, many proper space stations uh, because uh, we need to have multiple outposts to service the Derrick shuttle and may even build new shuttles. I'm halfway tempted honestly at this point to uh, to upgrade to point nine zero just to get the new shuttle parts so that we can build a space station out of it. I mean uh, right now I've got my point nine zero uh, KSP tutorial series but that one isn't going to go very fast and I don't think I'm gonna be unlocking shuttle parts and building space stations in that anytime soon. Uh, probably I won't be able to get to that point in that series before uh, version 1.0 comes out. So so I gotta think about that. Uh, so uh, I, I will solicit comments from you guys. What do you think about uh, trying to upgrade this series to 0 0.90 and uh, aiming for those shuttle parts and building the space station with that? We'll probably still launch the first module uh, in this uh, in this version without a shuttle. But I could also do the whole shuttle construction testing process. That's got to be painful, though. Uh, I would rather do that off to the side. Uh, testing a shuttle is not the easiest thing on, in the world. Okay, here we are in Joule Sphere Influence. Our periapsis is uh, fairly good for 70. And let me get to a view where we can see what's happening here and that means focusing on Joule. Not a great approach honestly. But that's a Tylo encounter. Uh, but that's unfortunately a Tylo encounter without any possibility of error breaking. <laughs> so we can't do that Tylo encounter. Uh, we need to air brake first, and that means going a little bit lower. I mean, Tylo can probably pull us in pretty easily no matter how we are. Uh, of course, unless Lathe gets in the way. Okay, let me do that initial burn, and then I'll check air braking calculator. It's not going to cost a full 62.4 meters per second, because that's far out, and we're going to do that right here. Okay, so here we go. Better pay attention, otherwise I won't see when it actually happens. S 
not looking all right. Yep, yeah, well, that's closer than we need to be. Okay, now let's get to the actual altitude that we want. Okay, error breaking calculator says about 120 kilometers, pretty much exactly, actually. I think it's uh, 120 and 38 meters. So, yep, uh, I think uh, we'll have to wait until we get a lot closer before adjusting to that. So, let's go in. Okay, this should be the ultimate in fine tuning, which means I just need a tiny little burst here. Oop. Okay, that should be good enough. Alright, uh, inclination will probably be a bit off. Not too much though from the look of things. Like uh, a few degrees. Okay. You can see most of Jules, Jules little moons orbiting it right now. Probably the tinier ones a little bit harder to spot. Definitely Leif, Val, and Tylo there. Okay, I think at this point uh, I can use time warp and take in the solar panels. Come on, solar panels. No good forgetting about that. Okay, getting in closer. Ooh, ooh I actually... Where's our always open solar panels? Come on. Rotate, rotate. Our always open solar panels are not facing the sun, so we were losing electric charge much quicker than we should have been. So, uh, it's not only Delta V that's our issue with Tylo, it's also we need to, ironically, we need to be a lot lighter before this engine can carry this against Tylo's gravity. So, actually, we do actually have to burn a lot of delta-v before we get there, though I, I don't think we're too far off right now. What's our thrust-weight ratio here? Oh, uh, we're focused on Jewel, and probably it won't let me focus on my own craft, will it? No. Oh, well. Anyway, so, tough to determine our... But uh, we've got at least... We've got more than... We've got uh, only slightly less than six tons of fuel here. Or is that right? No, 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 no. How much fuel? 5 tons, 5.22 tons or something like that. Uh, so this this whole mass is much more than 6 tons. So we've got a thrust weight ratio of less than 1 uh, in terms of Kerbin's gravity. Okay, that should be orbit around Joule. So now target is Tylo. Doesn't look like we will be too far off. 1.8 degrees in inclination. Okay, many perturbations. Let's hope Leith doesn't ruin all this. Seems to be something coming up around here. Okay, Tylo periapsis diminishing. Still being dragged by, oh, there we go. The Julian atmosphere has stopped dragging us. We've got a Tylo periapsis there. Doesn't seem like a bad periapsis. We could get closer though. Maybe just a little bit of a retro burn will fix that. Yeah, that that's good enough, I think. Tylo's gravity is quite monumentous, so we'll uh, we'll leave it there. Do I really need to correct inclination? Let's not. It's gonna take a little bit to actually get into orbit around Tylo. So maybe it's best not to not to waste anything. 
doesn't really matter whether our inclination around Tylo is a little bit off. Okay, solar panels out. So, fortuitous thing, though uh, I think we were shipping up for this sort of uh, encounter anyway on the way in, so not entirely surprising. Alright, let's head out there. Okay, so Tylo's Sphere of Influence, periapsis 152 kilometers. Let's see how much it'll take to get into orbit around Tylo. Not too much, not too much, which might be a bad thing. Uh, let's get into a tight orbit around Tylo. Hmm, I might have to actually do some calculations in order to see whether this is feasible or not to. Because uh, we've got the Delta V, I think. But we might not have the time. Because thrust weight ratio. Could point up a little bit more, but eventually that, uh, again, thrust weight ratio makes that dodgy. Okay, probably should do something from out here. Gravioli will probably work. Yeah, high over Tylo. Let's transmit that. Okay, 48 signs. That that gets us to our goal. Oh, way past our goal, actually. I thought... I didn't think we were that far... Oh, maybe... Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. It got us to our goal, and we got signs for these two contracts, I see. Uh, good, good. All right. But let's achieve orbit. So those contracts must have had some serious science benefit to them. Okay, we're in a nice tight orbit around Tylo. 222 by 91. Not circular, but... Uh... But we're in orbit, and our orbit is 1882 meters per second right now. Let's do some science quickly. I think a thermometer might work at this point. Yep. And gravioli. Yep. Ah, that might have been too quick. Okay, a goo container. And since I'm dubious about the possibility of actually landing this thing, I'll do the materials bay here. You're still supposed to transmit the data. I don't think it transmitted the materials bay data, did it? Huh. Hmm. I think I got chipped there. But anyway, uh, I don't know if it'll eventually decide to do that. But let me... No, the trick is I, I don't know how to calculate my delta V without having the information here. So maybe I need to see the... Well, no, let me just uh, hop out and hop back. Our, our focus should be reset, I think. All right. Uh, I hopped back in after going to Space Center. Now it's uploading the data from the Science Junior. Okay. And what's our focus? on this okay good so uh, 9.44 tons and our fuel calculators out we have uh, 3.88 tons of fuel okay so I get that we have 4150 meters per second left which is a lot but how long exactly will it take to burn that amount. Hmm. I get 507 seconds left worth of fuel. So that's 8 minutes and 27 seconds. It's a long time. So can we burn much of that before hitting the ground? It's a tricky question. We have a thrust weight ratio of much less than 1 right now. 9.44 is uh, 
well, we've got about uh, two thirds of the thrust to weight ratio, so 0 0.66, some, something around that sort of score. Yeah, I guess we can hit this crater. Okay, let's aim a little bit high. This is not unlike landing on the moon, I guess. I mean, the real moon. Uh, our, our orbital velocity is not too far off from that. And of course, no atmosphere. I can tell you from experience that trying to make that landing is pretty darn tough too. But the moon's gravity is much, much less than Tylo's gravity. In terms of surface gravity. So that makes this a lot more difficult. Okay, so that is now our descent orbit. And the time between apoapsis and periapsis is only 18 minutes. We're shooting around this thing pretty darn quickly. Which means that, that at the latest, we're talking about one third of this this radius in order to finish up our uh, finish up all the fuel we've got so we're talking about starting here if we just barely want to make it probably starting around here is the right time so that doesn't look per particularly good in terms of trying to get it right if you retro burn starting from here you're probably gonna drop the periapsis down pretty quickly So what we're going to need to do is burn angled up. Uh, it's not going particularly well. Even at this point. Let me just go ahead with a 45 degree angle. We are now going up of course. the best way to go since we, uh, we're not looking for efficiency per se. Uh, we've got the delta V, we just don't have the time. And so this buys us time, even at the expense of efficiency. Looks like we're not going to hit that crater. Gotta land short. Okay, once we pass periapsis, I mean apoapsis, we're going to be going down pretty precipitously. And you'll see that retrograde vector is starting to inch up pretty quickly. So, I don't need to be going less than 100 meters per second. I don't have the time for that. I don't have the burn time to keep it to that. Let's see now. What is my burn time? I've got two minutes of burn time left, according to what I've calculated. I don't know if that's true or not. I might have been making a mistake. So, um, the speed can't do integrals on the fly here. Let's try this. Now, I guess I might as well do flying over or something like that, which should be pretty close now. Not that one. We're still in space, huh? Well, then the... well, barometer might work. No, it can't. <laughs> okay. How about gravioli? No. Okay. Still not close enough, huh? key here is I have no idea what the altitude of land is, but I'm going to run out of fuel anyway, so it really doesn't matter. This thing is going to die. If I turned off the engine and tried to conserve fuel, gravity would just get me. Okay, so that's that. Last chance for science still in space. Barometer is not going to cooperate. Gravioli Flying over was never really a gravioli thing. 
Uh, we're gonna crash. We're gonna crash. Is there a mystery goo? Uh, whatever. Transmit. Okay. So, uh, close but no cigar, I guess you could say. Um, probably with finer tuned calculations could have managed it, but it would take a lot. And not with the, uh, with the thrust weight ratio we had, it'd be very very difficult. Even if you had everything perfectly worked out. Okay, so yep, yeah, back to the space center. So without further ado, let us unlock docking the large docking port. So research that and pay for that. Uh, and that hub is good. Inline Compatron, I don't think I need right now uh, but I might as well unlock everything heck I think uh, we had that pattern started already uh, I actually don't have enough science to unlock anything else so let me head to the VAB and build the first module of the station and I'll be back with you after that okay so we're gonna try this out this is this entire thing is gonna be station module one it's all getting into orbit it's single stage to orbit as far as I can tell unless my calculations are wrong. Uh, it's pretty close. I mean, it's a pretty tight on the numbers, so... I mean, I could probably slip... You know what? Maybe I'll slip another tank in. Uh, just so it's not too bad. That's probably the right place to do it. That'll make the numbers a little bit less close. Hopefully the joints will all be happy with me. But basically, uh, so we have plenty of room for fuel as far as fuel tanks are concerned. Uh, not much room for RCS. We don't have any RCS unit yet, but we've got four large docking ports so that we can add modules. So that is a thing we can do. Uh, accommodations for eight Kerbals. As you can see, no science lab yet. That'll have to be another module off to the side here. But uh, this is the main center line. Very formidable, as you can see. So I think this should do. Uh, that's where the, the um, whatchamacallit, Derek shell will dock. But there is also docking facilities for resupply vessels here. There's also some solar panel right here. And basic, um, basic batteries because we don't have the large inline ones. We only have the small inline ones so we can't... Uh, if we had the large inline ones then I would have used that instead. Okay, and lights to light up the docking port, so I think they're in the wrong place now because I added uh, fuel tanks. I originally only had the two orange ones. Actually, you know what? This should go down with the mainsail because uh, the mainsail tends to overheat with the orange fuel tanks, so let me put it down there. Really, it is all about joints at this point. I've added uh, some struts here. You can see linking here to here, but that's about it. Otherwise, I'm hoping that this is all good. Action grouped the solar panels, so they'll extend on the press of one. And yeah, I think this will do. But let's find out. All right. So yes, uh, it's a bit costly. It's 84,000 funds, but we've got quite a lot of buffer on that, so it's worth a try. And even if this doesn't work for some reason, I can't imagine why, uh, we have stuff to get by with. Alright. Okay, aiming for a dawn launch. SAS on, throttle up. And we're just going to try and get into an equatorial orbit at whatever altitude we end up at, because I think the margins are still tight. The single stage orbit lifting all this up is interesting. Not, not difficult, but I mean, you know. Uh, let's just try and get up there. All right, here we go. So the plan after this is uh, the stuff I put around other plants will be somewhat smaller, not as much crew accommodations and huge docking ports, but they'll have the the large fuel tanks. And what's going to happen is that uh, we'll refuel them in orbit around Kerbin so that they can transfer to their location, and they'll probably be single stage to orbit as well. So that's the plan. They might even be single stage to even further than that, but we'll see. Could fit uh, a nuclear stage on them, 
difficult to see how that will work exactly, but because uh, of course the nuclear stage won't be able to lift them off the ground. We could have a retrievable stage and then a nuclear stage to push them on their way, but in that case it wouldn't have much uh, refueling capacity. We'd have to send missions out to them more frequently to refuel them. Uh, I'll have to see. There's, there's a lot of infra infrastructure to figure out here. It's not uh, entirely easy to figure out the logistics of an uh, interplanetary system like this. But I think I'll apply some maps to it and we'll see what we can get. Always amazing what you can do with a mainsail, of course. Could go to 3.75 meter parts and see what we can do with those, but might be overkill. Certainly if the purpose of all this is to be able to refuel the Derek Shuttle when it gets out to places, that might be uh, overdoing it. I could work on the improved shuttle, that's the thing. And some people have suggested uh, dumping a certain portion of the shuttle, like the crew compartments, and uh, using fuel instead there. And of course, we've got a lot of liquid fuel capacity on the Derek Shuttle right now. Could go with uh, liquid fuel and oxidizer in those to increase its range. All those things are possibilities. The Rockamax hub is pretty hefty. That that hub uh, connector in there is 1.5 tons. It's a huge mass on this thing. Okay. Let me aim for 120 here. We can boost it up later. Ah, we are boosting our app a bit higher. Okay, well, let's go to... No, I, let's go to 125 then. Okay. Ah. Okay, well, alright. 125 by 127. I've got to turn around in retroburn just to circularize that. Circularization is more for transfers anyway. Okay, looks like we are we are oriented okay. Let's extend the solar panels. Shut down that engine. Open the main docking port. All right, I think we are in service. Let's get the lights all on. Yeah, I guess that's all of them. Okay, no lights for uh, this service docking port, unfortunately. All right. Okay, so we've got this up. Uh, let me see if I have enough time to do anything else. Uh, let's go back to the Space Center. Okay, I think I'll call an episode here. So uh, next time I need to come up with uh, some sort of uh, vessel to refuel the station. And that could mean, uh, I, I think I'll aim for something reusable on that. Uh, so uh, maybe single stage shore, it may be, um, yeah, it'll probably have to be single stage shore, but I'll see. We'll see about that. Uh, maybe also an attempt to get the Derek shuttle to the station would be interesting. Uh, without, actually not the shuttle, just the Derek SSTO to the, sp uh, to the station would be, would be a good thing to try. Uh, we don't need the whole shuttle system because it's not transferring to a far-flung location. So uh, just uh, Derek SSTO. And so, yeah, I think that's the plan. All right, so thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.